Fridays. This month we're looking at loyalty. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So me loyalty. loyalty. Amen. Loyalty, loyalty, as you may like it. Amen. But um, it's a very important word. Amen. It's a very important word that affects a great deal of things. And it will be erroneous for us to, in the spirit of balance, with everything that we teach and represent as a ministry, to not emphasize this one, especially because I've seen it ruin many people. Praise God. And the truth of the matter is every person is prone to it, even a Christian. Even a Christian, especially even more so young Christians. So much so the Bible makes it, uh, puts it like this, warning, he says, one of the reasons why he says you should not exalt someone or lift someone too quickly or early in a church, in a place or in a ministerial office or responsibility, he says, so the person does not fall into pride. So just because the person is a Christian, he didn't say the person is not a Christian, he says, um, a new Christian, a person who is still young, a babe, it's very easy for that person to get in trouble. So, um, however, that's a funny thing because when, when we're teaching a topic like this, uh, many times, babes or young, naive Christians, it does not excite them. It's not the kind of topic they long for, they want to look at. As is the case with many things in Scripture, the Bible says in the heart of a child, it says there is foolishness locked up in it. Say, but the rod of discipline will call him to order. Praise the Lord. We deliver him from such things. Praise the Lord. So, um, I want to commend every one of you who made it to church today, knowing that, okay, this is the message we are teaching. Um, this is the kind of thing being taught today. It's not on relationship, amen. It's not on dating where you would have a full service or full church. But you are still interested because you are making a wise decision that can save you a whole lot in the future. Praise the Lord. And uh, for someone like me, I, I believe and I've seen it that uh, habits affect every area of your life. And what we'll be teaching on, even though we may be coming from a church perspective, especially church, you know, and so on and so forth. But you hear me like I started last week making reference to various areas of your life because loyalty in the house of God or loyalty to God is supposed to affect every other area of your life. A loyal person, truly loyal person, will be loyal in every place. Praise God. Hallelujah. Allow me to remind you of one of the scriptures we looked at the last time and we can do Amplify it again. Proverbs, the 20th chapter, the 6th verse. Proverbs, the 20th chapter, the 6th verse. We can start from there and then we'll go to the King James. Amplify it first. Proverbs, the 20th chapter, the 6th verse. Praise the Lord. He said, most men will proclaim, that's the King James. If you have the Amplified, it would be nice. So you have them both. Praise the Lord. The Amplified says, many a man proclaims his own loyalty. Praise God. Many men say they are loyal. Most people will think they are loyal. And we started looking last week, what really is loyalty? And if you missed that message, I really recommend it for you. I'll tell you one thing for showing my... Um, discovery of the things that make great men great it is the foundations and the simple things it's not the complicated things it's not the big things that many people think it is a simple simple things that many times do not excite and that's why it seems as though there is a secret and people are looking for the secret to success because you are you are ignoring the obvious you are looking for the spectacular am i speaking to somebody in fact i'll show you one of those verses today but here he says many a man proclaims his own loyalty and goodness but who can find a faithful and trustworthy man? So this is all the way from scriptures now. And God is looking for, he's saying, he's saying where is that faithful? Where is that um, trustworthy? Where is that loyal person? Praise God. Hallelujah. In the King James, he says, most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. And I told you that one of the best synonyms for, for loyalty is faithfulness. Praise God. Hallelujah. Just to freshen your mind. Told me a loyal man is a faithful man. I, I refuse to agree that as important as loyalty would be in all of the Christian race, historically speaking, praise God. Up until now, from the beginning, up until now, that God would now write a whole book and omit the message or the word or the topic on loyalty. So we had to find it under other words. I say that to say, like I said last week, the best synonym is faithfulness. And so we continue teaching and training more light on what faithfulness is and many of the faithful men in scriptures. Amen. Isaiah 14 from verse 12 will be the place we begin today's episode from. Isaiah 14 chapter from the 12th verse. Isaiah 14 from verse 12. 
Praise Jesus. You could give me only King James, or you could, if you like this, you can keep it this way. Okay. Now, this is one of the popular ones. The very first, anytime you hear loyalty and disloyalty, come into mind. The first case of disloyalty you'll ever find. In fact, disloyalty is what led to what we call the first case of sin ever recorded in scriptures of evil, evil. So this is that, that situation here now we're reading from. It says, how art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I have a lot of teachings on loyalty and disloyalty. Um, and I've shared some of the stories. Uh, when, we, when we encountered a major case um, some years ago, um, precisely eight years ago now, time flies. Amen. Yeah, time flies. Um, it was so tough and so difficult, I thought I was not going to survive. 2013, can't forget that here. Praise God. It was tough, and I'd never forget the days and the nights I'd cry. I'd just cry. I'd cry because of some of the people that were involved, people that, that I loved personally so much. People that I had put my whole heart into. People that I had invested a whole lot in. People I had a lot of plans for. Not just short term, but long term. People I had planned. I, had a, I was thinking years about. And you started doing things and acting in ways that were clearly and obviously off point. It's a different thing if it was true. But it was off point, and you can't understand where did this come from. This is the situation. Imagine a person who God would call the son of the morning. Lucifer was someone who God, God held in high esteem. God, he, he, he had a special place in God's heart. And, and why this topic of loyalty is so important is because I've seen people, and I, and I always like to say it, I've seen people who there's a way people respond whenever they are cheated on. Guys or girls alike. Husbands or wives alike. Normal people, I mean. Praise God. Hallelujah. They suddenly feel turned. I'm going, I'm going to show this to you in scripture. But um, it's amazing how people know why it is bad to be disloyal to them. So why, you know, he's not loyal to me. She's not loyal to me. But they comfortably can do it to other people or even against God. They are disloyal to God. So here now, that's why the verse we read before, before this one, he's saying, who can find that truly faithful or that truly loyal person? Who can find that man who can be faithful to God? Who can find that man who can be faithful to that ministry? Who can find that man who can be faithful to that spouse or woman? Praise God. Now, Lucifer had a high place with God. And this is what happens. And, and God is writing about him. And, and God is still calling him, oh, Lucifer. If you study the, 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 the word itself, Lucifer, is the, it means light. Oh, Lucifer, son of the morning. That was the kind of relationship they had. But this is what happens. And God said, how you are fallen. You that I once loved. You that I once loved. Amen. Everything was going fine. We're having a good time. So what happened to you? Oh, how thou hast fallen. How had thou cut down to the ground, which did weaken the nations? Next one, 13. For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me say this. And every time when it comes to disloyalty, disloyalty is not so much about your physical actions as it begins first from your heart. Amen? Amen. You have to realize this very first act of disloyalty we see historically all through the Bible before Adam did his own. The Lucifer had done his own first. And that's why he lured Adam into doing the same. But before, this very first act was an issue of the heart. In his heart, he, he, he became disconnected from God. This is what he says. He says in his heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. This is what we call pride. And we've talked about pride, but we, we, we missed the point. Um, it's not only about pride. It was a case of a steward, um, 
Something was given to you. An office was given to you. An anointing was given to you. Ability was given to you. If you read the full history, uh, both here in uh, Isaiah 14 and also in Ezekiel, the 28th chapter, you study about Lucifer. You know, he had been given so much gifts and talents. And sometimes, and this is why we encourage people, especially those who are gifted, talented, blessed in one way or the other, financially or otherwise, or one other way, maybe talent, maybe voice or anything. Be careful that such a thing don't get you into trouble. Be careful he doesn't get you into trouble. So Lucifer was beginning to feel like a big boy. He was beginning to feel bigger than everyone. He says, I'm going to want more for myself. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. This was what he was saying. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. He begins to say such things to himself. To himself, rather. 14, please. He says, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. You see that? I'll be like God. For some of you who are new and who may not know some of the stories, I'll just give a brief because, you know, I, I, like I said, we can find a lot of them online. And I, I went in detail in time past and I don't want to go into detail anymore. Praise God. Um, and I went in detail in time past for teaching purposes, not for anything because we, we moved a long time. But I saw people, sons, daughters, you know, people that I loved so much, trained, invested years into, put a lot of things into, heads of departments, trying, you know, they raised an uproar, started pointing fingers, trying to confuse and deceive people with, so to say, prophecies and tongues and all sorts of things and dreams. They even said, uh, they wanted me to, to, to leave the church, literally. They wanted to take over the church. And it's funny, you know, just saying it every time. I always say people respond that way, but um, it's funny because I was really ready to. I was fine. I was okay with it. I didn't have a problem with that. I just wanted the right thing to happen and peace because honestly, you know, I didn't want headache myself. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. And that's why I, I, I say this and I often tell people sometimes, the thing you are, you know, like I always used to tell them, um, the thing you are so crazy, desiring about, the person Involved, he's not even crazy about it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I'll never forget, Pastor Gibson was there, one of the most meetings those days, you know. And um, uh, we, we had a meeting, we called some of the group because they had a group and a clique. They divided the church, caused a lot of problems, sold a lot of lies to people, accused me of all sorts of things that was never happening, said all sorts of things. You know, it's amazing. It still amazes me to today. Praise God. It still amazes me to today. And you have to realize, and please, because I, I really need to say this to you, um, because if it's not happened before, or if you've not seen it happen, you think it's a lie, or how can that be? You know, it's, like it's, too, it's too much for you to even imagine, but I've seen it happen. By people, and from people's mouth who call themselves prophets. I wonder, what are you talking about? You know, and, and I, you know I'm not a prophet. I don't call myself a prophet. Praise God. And the one who one says he's a prophet, you know, he should be seen more, so to say. Praise the Lord. They couldn't even, I remember one time, you know, like, I couldn't even speak. Can I say something? You know, yeah, like in my simple, humble self. Can I say something? Ah, what do you have to say? You have nothing to say. And shut the door against me. Ah, you know, I'm like, what is going on here? It was like a spirit had been let loose. And some of you will think, you know, you are, you know, oh, what is going on? Is that possible? I'm telling you, this year, Bible believing, tongue speaking, Holy Ghost filled, prayer for people. And so to think, and, 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 and it had nothing to do with these were young people. 19, 18, 20, 21 years old. And that's one of the things I was really concerned and I would cry because I couldn't understand. What is going on here? What is happening here? Oh, I'll never forget one of the things that encouraged me. In fact, two things. Okay, today. All right, four. Praise <laughs> <laughs> Amen. I'll never forget one of the things that encouraged me. It was one of the days during the midst of those things. I remember playing, um, I don't know how it just came. I just got a, a, a YouTube suggestion video of Pastor Benny Hinn. And Pastor Benny Hinn was... Um, experiencing, was um, sharing and preaching and sharing his story of things that he had been through in ministry too. i never forget. As I'm watching it, I'm just crying. I'm like, yeah, I'm in good company. 
and all the many things that people have done and everything and how his church, you know, we, you know, you know, we've been through a lot. Praise God. Hallelujah. And that's why, um, if you're really going to go far in life, there are two things you're going to have to learn. Um, apart from learning to be loyal, you're going to also have to learn to deal with betrayal. And Pastor Gibson was teaching the other day. I think he was the one teaching it. It's going to come. Praise God. It's going to what? It's going to come. I learned a whole lot. And um, all the things I learned, which I will share, which I've said again, was to learn to not take any person lightly. Praise God. And I found that sometimes it is the, um, it is not the most spiritual people who are the most loyal. It was shocking because, you know, like Jesus Christ asked them, then one time he says, um, everyone has left me. Will you not go also? Peter said, where can we go? It was shocking in those moments, in the heat and the toughness of everything, there are certain people I thought would leave the church who didn't leave. Amen. Amen. That was when I realized, yeah, God does not work the way you think. There are some people, they were there for real. They were there for real. And that's what I call loyalty. Praise the Lord. Of course, you know how the story ends. Um, um, just, of course, a lot happened, a lot of problems. Lost a lot of members, lost a lot of arms of the church. We used to have the French, the English, the Portuguese arm of the church. Everything, they crumbled the entire Portuguese arm. They crumbled the entire French arm. The church itself, the English arm was split in half. It was tough. It was one of the most tough, it was the toughest moment of my life to date. I have to be sincere. But I found encouragement in those who stood by. Praise the Lord. It ended, if you've not seen it, um, 2016, three years later. We tried to rebuild again from scratch. And that's one of the dangers of disloyalty. And that's the aim of the enemy, is to bring, and bring back everything to, to zero. Because people you had worked on, people you had invested in, leaders you had trained, everybody you had worked on, church you had tried to build to a certain level, everything gone. You have to start again. You have to start again from scratch. I was speaking to one of the pastors the other day, one of the cities, I said, I said, that event from that year took us five years backwards. I had to do everything again from the scratch. It ended 2016, three years after into all of this. Um, of course, when I was, I visited the UK, London, um, precisely, Prophet Hubert Angel's church, Spirit Embassy. Got there, of course, I was a victim of prophecy, praise the Lord. <laughs> an object of prophecy more put more properly they accurately prophesied the whole event and said a lot of encouraging words you can watch it all of these videos are online i don't have to go over them again and again and um since then god has been doing great beautiful things a lot of the people obviously since that time have apologized um some have said sorry for the effect of their actions affects not only them and that's one of the concerns i remember those days when i begged them i played with them i said you know, you don't understand. Whenever when they see me cry, some like the way they laugh, they laugh. Like, oh, you know, you this cry. Someone would say that. It's like, um, you know, fake tears. I'm like, can you understand why I'm crying? I'm crying because of you. Because I know the implication of what you are doing and what's how it's going to affect you. So it's one thing for you to come and apologize and kneel down and say, you know, forgive me and other things, but some never apologized in the time when they were in Ukraine. They had to have, when they went back to their countries, send private messages and say, we're sorry for all the things we did for all the years and everything. And I remember, and whenever every time when I speak to my wife, I say, I say, you remember those days, um, I used to tell you that everything that was happening, it's unfortunate it's happening through them, but it's happening for me. Because if I'll be sincere, even though it was the toughest moment in my life, it was the place where I found myself. It made me. It changed me. It transformed me. It helped me to see life for what life really was. So, I can understand God when suddenly the person with whom you have plans for, you have to realize that God does not make, he, he does not make mistakes and he does not have short-term plans. God for God to put that much into Lucifer, there was, 
Just think about how much havoc Lucifer and the devil has the devil has caused it today. You can imagine how blessed he really was. Why would God give that much to a man or to a being or a spirit as you may like it? And he caused the ruin of everything that God had done. And we learn something from this. I'd say it's worth listening, about, listening to. Praise God. It's worth what? We have a book where I normally recommend most of those in uh, at least certain, certain departments would read it. Um, I know prayer department, they always read it. Um, the book Loyalty and Disloyalty, I always recommend. I never forget the first time I pick up that book, pick, reading the book, Loyalty and Disloyalty. This was just around that time, 2013 ending 2014. As I read the book, as I'm reading, I'm crying. Because I suddenly realized this is something everywhere. It's not just this, the thing that is happening. It is the exact same way and the exact same words. The exact words I was hearing. Things like people are saying. People are saying. You know, one of them will come to you. After they've had their meeting, one will come to you and say, um, people are saying. I'm like, which people are saying? Praise God. The devil still has children. Amen? The devil what? The devil still has children. Praise the Lord. I remember one of the most difficult services I ever had. They gave me a deadline till the 31st December of uh, 2013. Praise God. So let's you say, we'll see what will happen. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? Every day was cruel. I was crazy every day. I never forget crossover service. It was tough. I knew that was the most difficult service I ever preached in. I was sweating for no reason. Because I'm thinking, what's going to happen 31st day? I'm not going to drop dead while preaching. I don't understand what's going to happen. I'm right there preaching, you know, myself, you know. I think we have one picture from it, you know, like that, like that. I think I took with uh, Sheba that day. She was just there rejoicing and happy, but she didn't know what, was, what I had gone through. You know, Dr. Sheba now, you know. Um, I, I, I'm there just like, trying to preach, you know, like, and a lot had been said and a lot of things had gone on. I'd done a lot of things in church and, you know, I just, I didn't know where, where problem was going to come from. I was accused of, of fornication or anything you can think of that they saw visions and everything. I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, well, you literally know my life. I've never hidden it. I've told you everything about me and myself. I say it even when I preach. But people see it through their own eyes. People think that because they lie to themselves that everyone else is lying. Because with time it began to show that actually the things they were accusing of were the things they were doing. So I'm wondering, like, what fornication? I'm always in this city. I live in the hostel. Always in this city. I have a roommate. Are you saying God is revealing to you that I'm fornicating? Where? How? Which home? And you're a prophet. And then that one has witness from apostle. <laughs> and suddenly everybody's apostling and prophetizing everywhere. And I wonder what's going on here. So eventually, before you know, they've shared that among themselves. I'm like, what is going on here? I've been, I've been leading for years and pastoring for years. And there's certain things I can't even do. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm preaching. I'm wondering maybe someone will just come. You know, like it is in Nigerian movies. Someone will just come from, maybe from the entrance point and say, yes, that's the man. That's the man that slept with me. I'm not like, who is it? Who did I sleep with that I do not even know about? You, you, and, and it sounds funny right now, but really, it was really tough because I didn't understand what was going on. I'm always in the city. I'm literally always here with you. So what, what is going on here? And this is why I have to, I have to be sincere with you. Why, why I do not take sides easily with um, people who accuse ministers or pastors or preachers. Until you have proof, I don't take you seriously because I've come to know that it is possible to accuse someone for something that they are completely 100% innocent of. And you would... And you think the person is saying the truth. So 
so I kept looking at the time. I kept looking at the time. When it was time to announce New Year, yeah, you know, like, first, uh, it, it became worse because none of them were in church that day in the congregation. So I was wondering what they were going to do in the last minute. So as we moved towards the crossover, I'm preaching there, I'm shaking. I'm preaching, looking at me. People were looking at me. Or maybe at least I thought people were looking at me. I don't know if they were looking at me because they have spoken to everyone. I thought, you know, everyone's not looking at him. Look at that fornicator, you know, that kind of thing. Like, I'm like, okay, God, how am I preaching to today? You know, I didn't. Amen. It was tough. It was the toughest gospel I ever preached in my life. And don't forget it. I think it was titled Fear Not. Amen. <laughs> Fear Not. What's tough? Praise God. And I myself was afraid there. Oh my God, is going on here? Shaking like. So I crossed over. My God. I think that was the year you came. That was the year you came. My God. It was, it was during those moments I understood the law of perfect replaceability. Many of the things I teach, I don't just teach because of, you know, um, I've seen things. I'll never forget that day. As I watched, just look at him today, his pastor, Pastor Emmanuel. As I watched him jumping, dancing, you know, just up and down. I'm like, who is this dude? Praise <laughs> God. He turned the place upside down, you know, just rolling his thing, shaking everywhere. I'm like, who is this dude? Like, who's this guy? Like, he's been here forever. He just came, you know, like, he just came, like, just shaking the whole place. And I'm like, this guy is just jumping up, rejoicing and happy. No, I'm here trying to survive. You know, I'm just trying to stay alive. You know, like, just praising God with all, just shaking the whole place. You know, and I, I'll never forget, you know, there was one of the sisters, you know, that day I, I remember I came sitting in front. Um, it was this sister who sat by my side. You know, she was new, and I think it was one of the sec- first or second service. And she was just sat sitting with me by the side. I look at her. You know, like she's sitting in front, front, like you know, like uh, as far as me, she's sitting in the daddy, like she's new, so she didn't understand protocols or anything. She just sat with me. I'm like, is this the one they will, <laughs> they will point at me now? What is going on? This is, I don't know what is going on here. You just, <laughs> you know, you just talk, you know, everything in the whole place was just crazy. I'm like, what is going on here? Honestly, I'll tell you the truth. I was ready to quit ministry then. I was ready to quit ministry then. In fact, the day when we were to have the meeting, we had just moved into the premises. Then, the day we had a meeting with them, trying to with, this, with the team of them. At that day, I was ready to listen to them. Whatever they said, if they say we want you to quit, I was ready to quit. And you know, like I just graduated, then you know, finished my first degree. So I was ready to just you know do something with my life. You know, I just want to serve God. I don't want trouble. I just want to serve God. Come on, just serve God. That's what I wanted before. You know, you cannot just do my thing and go. You know, so and. I didn't have a meeting. I was ready to just let them speak. You know, just ready and until something happened. That was weird things turned around. That was the day I realized, no, this was more than whatever this is. I don't know where this is coming from, but this is crazy. Was there one of them, a lady, picked up her, she picked up a belt. I think her belt. If you remember, it was there because, you know, and uh, she picked up her belt. Young, small girl. She picked up her belt. I'm wondering, what did she want to do with belt? <laughs> You know, I'm there. Pastor Richmond is there. Pastor Gibson is there. I think Pastor Chuka, I can't remember. I think maybe he was there. Maybe not. Sister Judith was surely there. You know, picked up her belt, lifted the belt up. I, I, what are you trying to say? After making some statements that were funny, and uh, when I saw her trying to do that, that was a moment I'm like, okay, this is it. This is it. This is really crazy. I've been too quiet. What is going on? Firstly, she, 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 young girl, she was just about, I think, uh, 20 then, 2021. 20, <laughs> Five. Um, it's crazy, right? Really crazy. So um, she, she, she first began by saying something because there had been a previous meeting, which we came. I, you know, I came with um, some of the leaders in church or people that I thought were elders, you know, indeed, you know, 
and other things in church, like Pastor R- Gibbs, Richmond, Pastor Gibson, that at least I'll say, okay, since people don't want to listen to me, I don't want to talk to me, maybe you speak to them. Maybe there's something I don't know. You can tell them. So we came, we approached her, and we're like, okay, we want to talk to them. She stormed out. She walked away. Just, guys, I'm sorry. I don't mean to be disrespectful, but, you know, um, she just left. And I, didn't, I couldn't even say anything. I said anything. She came at me, shouting at me. I'm like, what on earth is going on here? What is going on here? Well, so she comes the next time when we're about to have the meeting in church. And one of the, after this, one of these Wednesday services. And uh, so she comes. She's the leader, apparently. She comes and she wants to speak. And she starts by first saying, I heard that you people said. We never said, it was never, you left and so we said we're not having any meeting until next time when you're present because you have to be there apparently. You're one of the key people. So, so it was that moment I was going to speak and I'm like, who said? You know, so I turned to one to look who said. Apparently one of the guys who, I think he still had some sense then, um, tried to sp- stand up to speak and say maybe to correct things. As he stood up, very big, tall, huge, just as tall and big and huge as him. Praise God. A guy stood up to want to speak and I was watching, and I looked at this girl do something I've never done in ministry in all these years up to now. At my age, she looked at him and calls him by name. Shut up, sit down. And the brother actually shut up and sat down. That was when I knew something's wrong here. Because I still, you have to realize, I was in a bit of a denial because these were sons. It's not easy because it's not someone. It's just like, you know, several of you are, you, these are people I love and I genuinely really love and invested into. So I, I still was in denial that anything crazy was happening around you. Let's say they're having a bad day. You know, someone lied to them, you know, something like that. And, um, this was when I realized, I said, no, what's going on here? Which power is she using? Because when she brought out the belt, I'm like, you know, this is it. I've had it. All of you get out. Leave the church. Get out. Get out. You know, and, and I see today, it's funny because even after doing that, I still went on to apologize to them. Because that was, for me, that was the only thing I did. Because it's, at the end of the day, I'm, I'm the caretaker of God's house, but it's, it's not my church. That's, what, that's how I put it. That's how I saw it. So I went on and apologized to them. I'm sorry. You know, that's the only thing I think I ever did wrong in all of these things, if, they, if it is wrong, you know. Um, but... Go back to 13. 12, actually. It says, oh, he says, how art thou fallen? I spoke the other time when teaching on, on Sunday about anointing. It's one thing to be anointed. You can be anointed, but I've seen anointed people. I'm not, and this is what I'm talking about. We have people who really had a future with God by the way they were going. They loved God. They love to pray. Did they maybe dream dreams? Maybe. Maybe they saw a few visions. But it's one thing to dream a dream, it's another thing to understand what you're saying. So, you know the story of Lucifer? It was here he started from. He saw his superior and he saw God, and he says, I want to be like God. I want to be so much. I want to even reach God's level and dethrone God. And guess what happened? It's, it, you have to realize it. It wasn't even God that responded. And this is why teaching loyalty in church is very important. And this is why I commend some of those, uh, some of them who were with me then, who knew about this. Because it's amazing because in the, those period, I, I didn't even say anything. I didn't speak to any person. I didn't tell any person. I was quiet because these are songs. I didn't start speaking about this until many years later. I was completely quiet. These people I genuinely love, and I was still hoping that one day they would come to their senses. But for them instead, they kept going. They kept going. They were out for me. Even years after, they, were, they kept going. They were, they, 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 they were out to crush me in the church because of a false prophecy. Let me say this now at this point, and this is why when I, for someone like me, you know, um, I'm not, I'm sorry to say, I hear God and I take God's word and his scriptures more seriously than anything or any prophet or any vision, any person. I don't care who you are, the kind of prophet. It's not important to me. 
Every prophecy must line up with scriptures. Must. I'm asking you somebody. Every prophecy must line up with scriptures. If it doesn't line up with scriptures, I'm not saying someone who doesn't know the scriptures. If it doesn't line up with scriptures, I don't take it seriously. It doesn't matter how high you are. It's just like someone was saying because Lucifer is very anointed and very high. So you can say what you like and it's true. That's not true. I'm asking you somebody. 